What is up guys? My name is Ben Harwell. Thanks for checking out my channel. If it's your first time here, please consider subscribing. So this year's contract not only has me working here in Mallorca, but once a week I have to island hop, get on a plane and fly over to the island of Ibiza. So how do I take the guitars? How do I slim down the rig? How do I decide what I'm going to take? Let me show you. But I can't do it now because I'm running late as it is and I need to get to the airport. By the way, all this next footage is shot on my iPhone, so yeah. So this week's trip is done, it was a good gig, the weather was awful though it rained the entire time as you will see from the footage. But the show was good and the people at Charlie's are awesome. So let me go through how I approach doing this gig every week. There's no two ways about it, it is a nightmare travelling with guitars. Fortunately it is a little bit easier the way that I get to do it with this gig every week. The management company that I work with book all my flights and they book them with a company called Iberia and they have a really cool policy where guitars get classed as hand luggage and with these small inter-island flights it's actually pretty straightforward. The guitar gets checked as hand luggage at the desk so you carry it yourself through the gate to the plane where you hand it off yourself to a baggage handler and it gets put in a separate hold in the plane. Next to actually booking a seat for guitars, this is probably the next best way of doing it. So far, every time that I've done it, it's never been 100% straightforward. Some of the staff do get a bit confused about what is allowed to go on and off the plane, but eventually when they realize what it is that I'm carrying and they read through the policy on the website, it's pretty straightforward. So to actually carry my guitars, I take a mono M80 dual case, which has two guitars in it. My number one, Joyce, which is a 2012 Sir Modern, which you can check out in a video here. And my Gibson Les Paul. They both go in the single case, which I can carry on my back, which makes getting through the airport a lot easier. The M80 dual case is a really well protected case. And so far, such wood, I've had no problems getting it through the airport. I have noticed that it's got a few little battle scars on it now though, a few little rips here and there. So I'm just hoping that it's gonna get through the rest of the flights for the rest of the season. In this case, I also take two travel guitar stands. They fold down super compact. They're really lightweight, but really sturdy. And they just slip straight into the front of the mono case. I also have a few spare strings and picks and a few cables, and it all goes into that bag. The next thing that I take is the Helix bag, but as this isn't the most sturdy or robust bag, I might be changing this for a flight case pretty soon as it's already getting damaged just from being put on and off the plane. But at the moment, the Helix goes in here, my CAE custom wire goes in here. The Helix does have some really good wires built straight into it, but I don't really like the feel of the treadle on the Helix, so I use an external wire, which I think sounds a little bit better anyway. My exotic SP compressor goes in this bag. I've started using this compressor as an always on compressor, especially when I'm doing this gig, which is a direct in gig. So there's no backline, there's no amps, there's no nothing. I have to plug straight into their gear, which isn't really too much of a problem because I've got a really good install inside the club, but it does mean that I'm playing the entire gig on in ears, which isn't something that I really like to do. I much prefer having the sound of a guitar behind me rather than straight into my ears. But I have found that using the SP compressor as an always on compressor straight into the front of the Helix with the blend knob at about nine o'clock on the medium setting kind of gives me the feel of a real tube amp turned up. Also in this bag, I have the Line 6 Relay wireless unit. As a personal preference, I do like to run wireless. 
For me, it just gives me more freedom on stage and I do tend to get caught up when I have a cable, so running wireless is a better option for me. But in some venues, it's not possible. Depending on what other signals are being put out in the venue and lights and things like that, you do sometimes get interference that you can't get rid of. But the majority of the time, I can usually find a clean channel and I'll use the wireless. The entire rig, including the Helix, runs off one Voodoo Labs Pedal Power 2 Plus. I use the courtesy outlet to power the Helix and the regular 9 volt outlets to power everything else. That way it keeps the power clean, it keeps the noise flow down, and it just makes the whole setup a lot quicker and a lot easier. In this bag, I also have the majority of the cables, audio from the Helix to the front of the house, cables for my microphone, spare cables, spare batteries, my Ebo's in here, not that I ever really have to use it, a couple of spare IEC leads, mm, I think that's about it. And it all fits into this one bag, which before mine broke, was actually a really good solution because it's a backpack, so you just throw it on your back and it's easy to travel about with. But mine broke. Everything breaks when you're on the road. So one of the straps has actually broken off my bag so I can no longer carry it as a backpack. So I'm thinking that I'm gonna change it for a flight case, just so I've got that added bit of protection and I don't think this bag's gonna survive too many more trips anyway. As for other gear, as I said, it's a directing gig, so I need my in-ear rig, so that means taking my PSM 300s and my Shaw 535s, and it also means taking my QSC TouchMix 8. That way it means that I have complete control over the majority of the sound, I have control over what I send to the front of the house, and I have control over my in-ear mix. The mixer, the in-ears, and the boxes for the wireless mics all go into one case. And that's pretty much everything that I take. I would like to take some extra things. I would really like to have an amp with me on this gig or even just the power cab behind me, but it's not always possible when flying with gear. I think the result and the sound that I'm getting just from plugging direct with the gear that I'm using is pretty good. Directing gigs aren't the most enjoyable gigs for me really. I'm much more used to having an amp behind me and getting the interaction between a guitar and an amplifier and when you're plugging direct, you kind of lose that. I do find that I can kind of get some of that touch back by using the compressor, but it's not the same kind of thing. As an added side note, and as some of you guys know, all my gear is insured. So if the worst were to happen, I'm covered. That includes a replacement service. So that if I got to Ibiza and something was broken, I can call my insurers and hopefully they'd be able to help me out in time to get the gig done. Flying with gear is always a bit scary, but if you take the right precautions and you protect your gear as much as possible, you're gonna be fine. So that's it, that's everything that I take, and that's how I do a weekly fly gig to Ibiza. So I hope some of you guys find this useful and you can put some of these practices to use if you ever have to fly gear. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up below. If you want to watch another video on my channel, you can click just up here. And don't forget to subscribe, you can do it just there. See you in the next one.